natural world of the Middle East is governed by one all-reaching force, the sun. It scorches this land, claims its victims, and breathes new life. Jordan's wildlife faces some of the natural world's greatest challenges. Arid deserts, scorching temperatures, and punishing rays. Yet, this country hides a world of treasures. Those who've adapted to this elemental force thrive in nature's furnace. The Middle East is among the hottest and driest places on our planet. It's one of the most cloud-free places on Earth and feels the full force of the sun. Straddling the Tropic of Cancer and positioned next to Asia, large parts of this region are too hot and too far from the great oceans for rain clouds to form. At its heart lies Jordan, the fourth driest country in the world. For the creatures that live here, there is little protection from the sun's penetrating rays. Their rhythm of life is dictated by its daily cycle. Desert covers over three quarters of the country. Temperatures rise above 40 Celsius. Yet, treasures are hidden amongst these seemingly barren landscapes. Flora and fauna have found sanctuaries of survival as the sun travels its course. Dawn recharges reptiles, guides armies, and feeds underwater worlds. Patrolling the night pays off for some of the biggest carnivores while others fall victim. It's this rhythm of the sun that dictates the rhythm of life. Sunrise stirs this tranquil land and its wildlife into action. Good things come in small packages. At just over three centimeters, the darkling beetle plays an important role in Jordan. They eat decaying matter. Mountain edge lichen provides a mere snack. She must find juicy plant life. But it's easier said than done. With wings fused together to reduce dehydration, she is flightless. It's going to be a long but vital walk. As the sun rises, its rays breathe new life into more flamboyant creatures.
basking on rock faces. The Sinai Agama needs to warm up quickly for a morning of showmanship. It's mating season for these cold-blooded lizards, so he is searching for a podium on which to perform. Like other Agama lizards, his nods and push-ups are a sign of his dominance. But it's his colour which is his real trump card. Turning blue during the mating season helps males stand out and attract a suitor's attention. With age, the vivid blue covers more of his body and increases his chances. But attracting attention can also work against you in Jordan's deserts. The Persian horned viper has a taste for lizards. Being nocturnal, this is his last opportunity to eat before the sun grows too strong. Stunted short horns mean these snakes are often known as false horned vipers. But underestimating this assassin could be your last mistake. He packs enough venom to cause paralysis in a human. One bite is all he needs to bring down his prey. For an ambush, stealth is critical. The bobbing blue agama should keep his wits about him. But it's getting late for the false horned viper. Avoiding overheating is critical. Hunting will have to wait until the sun's energies slip away and night falls once again. As another day dawns in Jordan, the far reaching effects of the sun are starting to be felt. It dictates the pace of life for animals and influences landscapes. 80% of this country is covered by desert. Jordan's highlands rise from this sea of sand and canyon shade provides respite from the sun's unrelenting heat. Located along the Great Rift Valley, that travels some 6,000 kilometers from Eastern Africa. Dana biosphere is shaped by limestone, sandstone, and granite.
It covers over 300 square kilometers and hides Jordan's most diverse species and habitats. The dry, open grasslands and rocky valleys provide the perfect habitat for the Palestine sunbird. Females have darker brown feathers for camouflage, while males like to attract attention with their iridescent green and blue. Darting and hovering uses up valuable energy. So these birds pick specific flowers where the sugar content is higher. As the sun rises, so does the temperature. And the harvesters of Dana are on a tight schedule. Black harvester ants forage before it gets too hot. Climbing blades of grass the equivalent size of an 18-story building, they painstakingly cut and remove individual seeds. Meanwhile, other foragers march them home. There's no one leader here but there's method in their madness. Each time they meet a fellow colony ant, they communicate through smell, touching their antennae. Patroller ants decide the direction of foraging for the day. Whilst chemical markers left along the trail recruit more foragers and build the army. They constantly weigh up the efficiency of their speed over what they're bringing home. Too heavy, and it's not worth moving. These ants won't eat what they collect, though, and are working to feed the young larvae back at base. while the highway of ants plows through the grassland. Others are back at the colony's entrance and concentrate on cleaning. Piling up husks of the stripped seeds in a midden, they maintain ant hygiene. No one ant has a set task so they can quickly react to environmental changes. Or unwelcome guests. The tortoise has been around for more than 220 million years. Made of keratin, found in fingernails and hooves, his shell provides an impenetrable armor should he wander to the wrong place. The ants swarm, reacting to the invasion. But, oblivious to the mayhem, he continues his march.
By mid-morning, the temperature is heading towards 30 Celsius. The rising temperature also affects grasshoppers and locusts. Like lizards, they use the heat of the sun to become more active. As the day warms up, it puts a spring in their step. These athletes of the undergrowth travel the equivalent of 40 meters and undergo forces of nearly 20 G. Down here, you need to be quick. Camouflage hides lightning-fast killers. This sharp-eyed iris mantis can see up to 15 meters. His eyes are made up of thousands of microscopic lenses. And using stereo vision, he can judge distance like humans do. Sometimes not even the longest jump will save you from the clutches of death. Any moisture in the dawn air soon burns off in the heat of the blistering sunrise. Water holes have disappeared and winds have removed sand, creating a rocky landscape called Hamada. Our darkling beetle faces many problems in the hot desert she crosses. Extremes of temperature Shortage of water and strong winds are all part of her daily life. She is among the most successful animals of the desert. But even for darkling beetles, the climate is not to be underestimated. Sandstorms can whip up in a moment. Dry twigs are her only shelter, as she reveals another reason for her journey. Her egg-laying tube, called an ovipositor, tests the ground to see if it's suitable to lay her eggs. But conditions aren't right, and something else is coming. Onagers move across this unforgiving land in search of sustenance. They are resourceful grazers, 
Most of their water comes from this seemingly dry food. They've learned to be efficient with what they can get. Wild ass of arid habitats can sustain a water loss of up to 30% of their body weight and will even raise their temperature to prevent sweating. Onagas are notoriously bad-tempered and thought by locals to be untamable. With little shelter in the eastern desert, perhaps they need this toughened attitude. This lone stallion watches over a herd of passing females. He's on the lookout for competition. A patch on the female's root is a prime piece of real estate. He may need to defend it. But in the scorching midday sun, there's little chance of a competitor picking a fight. Further west marches Jordan's mountainous spine. Traveling the length of the country, in the north, the highlands have a more Mediterranean climate. The tranquil pine forests of the north provide cooler temperatures and shade. But this haven from the heat is not so safe. Grey ghosts roam these forests. And hide in the grasses. Having spent the heat of the day taking shelter in Jordan's forests, the pack begins to move through their territory. Being so widely spread, the grey wolf varies physically throughout the world. Those of the Middle East can be six times smaller than their northern tundra cousins. Their largely short grey coats keep them cool, while long hair on their back protects them from the sun. The wolf leads a feast or famine existence, gorging on as much as 10 kilograms of meat, able to fast for months if necessary. Led by an alpha male and female, everyone is kept in check, especially at feeding time. Sometimes there's not quite enough to go round. Another night of hunting is needed. As the sun begins to set, the pack set out on their patrol. Wolves play a vital role in the health and proper functioning of their ecosystem. But they aren't the only ones roaming the night.
This highly tuned predator is a striped hyena. Armed with jaws capable of crushing bone and acute senses, he can detect food up to several miles and has already found tonight's first course. These creatures are steeped in myth and legend, thought of as grave robbers. Placing tombstones began in the Middle East to prevent them digging up bodies. But this beast is far from just a ruthless raider. Devouring the body parts that other predators leave uneaten prevents the spread of disease. His digestive system is so hardy, even festering remains are no challenge for Jordan's ultimate waste disposal worker. The sun's constant movement dictates the pace of life and shapes habitats in Jordan. Inhabiting some of the most torrid deserts on Earth, these hardy beetles can withstand temperatures of 50 Celsius. Her long legs keep her body at a good distance from the burning sand and enables her to travel at speed. But even darkling beetles need to stop now and again. Where there is no water, animals have to adapt. She is able to create water internally, extracting it from her food. However, finding it and a place to lay her eggs is becoming critical. For others, water and shelter are essential and the canyons that break up the rolling, arid landscape are a sanctuary. Cathedral-like walls of Wadi Mujib mean the sun is only a passing visitor. Formed through ancient earth movements, it's still being carved today. It hasn't rained here in months, but geological shifts that helped create the canyon have also released thermal springs. Superheated water from the Earth's depths is rich in bromine and other minerals. Where water feeds the parched land, flora explodes. And wildlife has set up home. Plants bring insects, which provide food for rock pigeons. They use every inch of these fortress-like walls for nesting and to avoid predators. But a high-rise home is not safe from aerial threats. The baked land lying above Wadi Mujib has given rise to fan-tailed ravens The rock pigeons have every reason to be wary. 
Given the chance, they will take eggs or young nestlings. Taking flight into the sun confuses any attacker and draws them away from the nests. Opportunities are rare, and they will have to keep searching before the sun gets too high. The sun's power doesn't just affect the flora and fauna, it even shapes environments. The Dead Sea is the lowest point on the surface of the planet. For centuries, it has been fed by the Jordan River and wadis, but it's disappearing. Evaporation concentrates salts into what has become one of the greatest mineral reservoirs known to man. With no rivers that flow from it, the sun alone is estimated to reduce it by two meters each year. As a result, it has the highest density and salinity of any sea in the world. Over 43 billion tons of salt are thought to be in the Dead Sea. Peninsulas of cast salt have been created. Lines in this false land depict the drop in water level, while deposits have shaped ornate casts. But it also hides a hidden world. The lake's saltiness means that larger organisms, such as fish and frogs, can't survive in the Dead Sea. However, in 2010, a diving expedition revealed several craters. Lying at a depth of 30 meters, they were covered in a film of new bacterial species, proving that even in one of Jordan's most extreme habitats, where the sun reaches, life exists. For much of Jordan's wildlife, routine is their ritual. Cold-blooded creatures begin their day the same way, needing to re-energize after the cold night. However, the star Dagama sun worshipping is tight for time. Living in a canyon means he has to pick the perfect spot for sunbathing. Jordan's wadis haven't just been a sanctuary for agamas, though. And these lizards are, in fact, exercising squatters' rights in a lost city. Petra. Facing east, sunrise reveals this ancient civilization. Dating back over 2,000 years, this metropolis of tombs and monuments was once the thriving capital of the Nabataean Empire. Amid the rugged desert mountains and canyons, it was a defendable crossroads of trade for the region. Meaning rock in Greek, Petra is half built, half carved from the mountain. Lost from the Western world, it was only rediscovered by Europeans in the 19th century. Few written records still exist today, but it's now believed these wealthy spice traders worship deities 
and the sun. Archaeologists think the sun was so important to the Nabataeans that they followed its cycle and even built Petra so it would illuminate their sacred places like a celestial spotlight. The natural world had an important place in their lives. Waterways were channeled out of the rock. Tombs hide ancient snake carvings. While mosaics depict creatures and signify their respect for the natural world. Without harnessing nature's ship of the desert, the camel, the Nabataeans may not have been so wealthy and created such a monumental city. The narrow canyons and fissures cut deep into the mountains through Wadi Rum conceal ancient rock drawings. Etched more than 2,000 years ago by nomadic tribes, they depict the relationship between man and beast. Wadi Rum was an important route for traders. The Nabataeans who built Petra owed their wealth to controlling the oases of this region and the camels that were the ships of this desert. Today, Bedouin tribes still live among the mountains of Wadi Rum and maintain this relationship with the camel. For generations, they've been their only support and the only means of survival here. By mid-morning, the temperature is already reaching the high 30s. For the Bedouin, the turban is an essential garment, protecting them from the sun and heat. But the camel comes with its own protection. The camel's fur coat reflects the sun, insulating her from the heat. It means they rarely sweat. They even trap and recycle water vapor in their nostrils when breathing and return it back to their body. Carrying nearly 100 kilos, good footwear is essential for travel. A large leathery pad with two toes at the front helps make the gait of a camel silent and keeps it from sinking into the sand. While thick leathery skin on its leg joints enable it to kneel on the hot sand when it's time to rest. Skills passed down through the generations are a matter of life and death. The sun acts as the Bedouin's GPS, so it's time to rest his camels and make a fire to ward off any creatures of the night. As dusk falls, an ancient monster begins to hunt.
Some people believe these creatures feast on sleeping camels, earning them the name, the camel spider. But this nocturnal hunter is not a camel eater or a spider. This monster of the night is a locust killer. Large, powerful jaws seize their prey, and digestive fluids liquefy the victim's flesh, making it easy to suck the remains into her stomach. Part of the arachnid family, it's known as a solifugid, meaning those who flee from the sun. And this is now her shadowy domain. As soon as the sun sets, the desert cools considerably. Night temperatures can drop to zero degrees Celsius. But as the sun returns, they can reach their peak within just a few hours. A desert ant is out in the heat of the day. But he is banking on the sun's help. In human terms, they can trek the equivalent of over 60 kilometers scouting for food. Getting lost out here will end in death. So his movements aren't so random. Stopping and turning, he actually orientates using the sun. With his escape route plotted, he heads straight for home. Finding shelter from this sun and sand blasted environment can be critical. A young camel spider hasn't been so lucky. But it gives him a huge opportunity. In the desert, and colonies do everything to avoid losing water, so go out foraging alone. This is proving too big for him to manage. However, this is an opportunity not to be wasted. Reinforcements come to the rescue, but they've got to be quick in the midday sun. As the clock counts down, ants take over from each other before the sun claims them too. Finally, they win and claim their prize. The sun has far-reaching powers, but its penetrating rays also have many benefits for Jordan's wildlife. The southern coast meets the Red Sea. 
corals need sunlight to survive as they grow from algae that live inside. It's this algae that produces oxygen for them and provides food, helping them grow faster. The sun also feeds coral like it would do a plant. Pulsing polyp coral move water through the colony, which increases oxygen levels. As new water is pulled in, it improves photosynthesis rates by up to 10 times. In turn, this ecosystem provides food for larger marine life, like the hawksbill turtle. They play a key role in this ecosystem's health. Using their sharp, hawk-like beaks to penetrate the sponge's outer armor, they expose the soft internal parts to other sponge-eating animals. The turtle's peculiar diet also helps keep sponge populations in check, freeing up space on reefs for other organisms to settle and grow. Feeding and growing this underwater world, the sun has far-reaching benefits, even below the surface. As another normal day sets over Jordan, an extraordinary journey comes to an end. Having traveled over sandy dunes and rocky deserts, across mountains and through canyons, our darkling beetle finally reaches her haven. Sea air provides some desert plants with much needed moisture. A bounty fit for a queen provides a feast of seeds and thirst-quenching flowers. Short, feeler-like pulps act like fingers to handle her food, while her mouthparts shear through the vegetation. And a good source of food attracts others too. This micro-oasis not only provides food, but a safe place she can lay her eggs. Then, her journey will continue, as will her struggle to survive another day in nature's furnace. Until dusk, the sun dictates the pace of life in Jordan. Creatures and environments all feel its force. Year on year, temperatures are rising dangerously and deserts are advancing. While the sun can be damaging, it also has the power to breathe new life. Like the ancient civilizations that once flourished here, the creatures of Jordan are led by the sun's never-ending cycle. For both the sun worshippers and nighttime assassins, each day brings new hope, new challenges, and new opportunities. From arid landscapes to hidden corners, Jordan's natural world manages to live life in the balance. And 
survive nature's furnace.